Hi everybody. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate descriptive statistics for this data set in Excel. And the, the descriptive statistics I'm talking about include mean, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis, as well as the standard error of the mean and finally confidence intervals. I'll also demonstrate how to create a visualization for the data. The first thing that we need to do is to make sure that under this uh, data button, as I clicked, we have data analysis button. If we have not installed this, it's very easy to install it really. It's inside Excel so you don't have to uh, get it from an external source. What you need to do if you can't see this, simply go to File, the File menu, click on that menu, and go all the way down to Options. It, uh, click Options and this pop-up menu will appear. Excel options. So you have quite a few, click on a few options, click on uh, add-ins and this window will appear. Now uh, you will see these two columns, these two blocks, one of, one of them is active application add-ins. It's, it's a bit grayish so it's a bit maybe a bit difficult to see but it reads active application add-ins and the other one is inactive application add-ins. If you have not installed Analysis Tool Pack, you will see Analysis Tool Pack under Inactive Application Add-ins. That's fine. So just click on it once uh, under Inactive Application Add-ins so that it will be selected. After selecting it, click on Go right here at the button and you'll get this pop-up menu. Uh, in this window, you have to check off Analysis Tool Pack and then click OK. After you click OK, everything will be ready. So I'm not going to click OK since I've already done that and I've installed my data analysis. So I'm going to cancel it, but please do not forget to click OK. OK. So now the first thing I would like to show is how to uh, insert a chart to uh, represent and visualize the data. The data that I have um, is really fictitious and includes uh, 30... 32 records. Okay, so it's number 33, but uh, we don't count in uh, the data itself. All right, so what I would like to do first is to click on this uh, to, to first choose my data. I have to highlight everything and then click on this button here. The chart I'm going to use is a statistic chart. Uh, so I click on this and I'll get a histogram for it and I move the histogram to the right side a little bit here so I have all sorts of formats to choose from here so actually I like this format so I can click on this and the chart will be chosen for me the other thing I would like to add is to add some uh, further elements to it I go to add chart elements and go all the way down to uh, data labels because I want to see um, the frequency of the data and here outside end um, is the option that I want to choose I click on it and you'll see that within this range between 1 to 2.5 I've got six people or six uh, pieces of data uh, within 2.5 to 4, I've got 16. Within 4 to 5.5, I've got 9, and, and the rest is just 1. So this is how the data has been uh, distributed across these three uh, categories. This, If you're asking me why this has been uh, selected in this way, these categories have been selected in this way, this is really arbitrary and is done by Excel. So what is important is uh, descriptive statistics. I go to Data and I have my data analysis tab here. So what I would like to, oops, what I would like to do is to click on data analysis and this window will pop up. I have a bunch of options here uh, ranging from t-tests, uh, ANOVA, covariance, correlation analysis. What I would like to choose is descriptive statistics first. That's all I want to do in this video. I click OK and this window will appear. Okay, so um, this window has quite a few options for me. First of all, the input range. And the input range has to be under the D column, not really A. So what I would like to do is just 
simply backspace, that's step one. And step two is uh, click on data and drag it all the way down. So I go all the way down to the end of the data. And you see it has been chosen. Uh, it um, ranges from D1 to D33. In addition, I also have a label in the first row, therefore I have to check this off. If it's not checked, please check it off. And finally, I would like to arrange my input. And basically, what I would like to do is... What I would like to do is to put the input under, for example, column F. Uh, you will see that it will appear in two columns. So the first cell, which I have chosen, uh, will be uh, selected for me. And that's F, so I click F, so it will be chosen. And then we have to check off summary statistics and confidence intervals of me. Uh, that's uh, confidence level in Excel, but it's actually confidence interval for me. And that's everything we want to do. Um, the confidence interval will be at 95%. And I'm going to click OK. I will interpret what confidence interval means in this uh, scenario. So let's click OK, and there we go. Yeah, we have two columns. We have quite a few statistics. On this side, we have got the names of those statistics. And on, on this side, we have the statistics themselves. So let's quickly go through them to see how. Let me just color code this really. OK, to see what, what we can get out of it. First of all, we have got mean. The mean of the sample is 3.625, with a standard deviation of 1.38, etc. With quite a few decimals, and the sample variance is 1.9. Variance is always larger than one in all data sets, by the way. Now we've got a mode, we've got a median, and the mean, as you see, the mean has been dragged away a little bit from the mode and median, and it indicates that there might be a slight um, deviation from normality. In order to check more, we would uh, we will have to look at kurtosis and skewness values. Uh, as you see, they fall pretty well between minus one and uh, minus one and plus one, or even minus two and plus two, if you do not want to be very stringent. In um, some textbooks in applied linguistics they suggest minus one plus one in some other textbooks they suggest minus two plus two as an acceptable range for kurtosis and skewness values to indicate uh, normality now if you look at books in structural equation modeling for example the famous book by Klein published in 2015 you'll see that he offers um, a skewness of minus uh, the range of minus two plus two and a kurtosis range of minus seven to plus seven. That's that's pretty large. So uh, really depends on what uh, range you go with. In any case, there is enough evidence that this data is normally distributed. Now we've got minimum, maximum, and the range, which is minimum minus maximum, or maximum minus minimum, which you'll get a five. And the sum of everything is. 116. Now there is another statistic here which is the standard error or standard error of mean. Standard error of mean is calculated by dividing the standard deviation uh, by the uh, the root square of the sample size. So first of all you need to take the root square of the sample size, that's one thing. Then divide standard deviation by the root square of the sample size. And you'll get, actually, you'll get the uh, standard error of mean, this one. And finally, confidence interval, 95% 90, confidence interval. This is a very useful statistic. And I think it's, um, it would be nice to always look at it. What does it mean, exactly, to have a confidence interval? Um, it means that if we repeat sampling, that's collecting the data from the same population, over and over and over again, repeatedly, 95% of the time, the mean uh, uh, will match the results that we have gotten here. That's the mean. So 95% of the time, the mean will match 3.625. In other words, if you repeat sampling over and over again, you will be 95% certain that the mean 
um, falls within uh, the mean score plus minus confidence interval. So uh, every confidence interval has a higher band and a lower band. In order to calculate the lower band, basically what you can do is you subtract the mean, is, uh, the mean which is right here. So what I would like to do is this equals mean minus uh, confidence interval and equals. So this is one of the bounds and the other one will be plus. So it's going to be mean, uh, sorry, uh, equals mean plus uh, confidence interval and that's it. So the lower bound is, this is, uh, let me just write it down here for you. This is the lower bound and this is the upper or higher bound. So if we, in other words, if we repeat the sampling or data collection over and over and again, with 95% uh, of confidence, we can say that the mean that we will obtain from this, uh, the population will fall between 3.12 and more decimals and 4.12 and more decimals. And it will be therefore close to the mean that we have gotten here. It will not fall outside of this range. That's what a confidence interval means. Actually, this is good news because the data is normally distributed and the confidence interval here is rather small, if you will. It depends on how you interpret small. It's not too large and it's not, it's, it's not, in my opinion, it's not very off. So it's pretty fine to me. Okay, this is how you will do um, descriptive statistics, including skewness, kurtosis, and uh, the rest of the statistics that I went through using Excel. I hope you found it useful. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day.